सो हाई गाइस इन दिस टूटोरियल आई टीच यू हाउ टू कोड इन मशीन लर्निंग यूजिंग पाइथन और राइट सो एम अज्यूमिंग यू नो वॉट मशीन लर्निंग इज इफ यू डोंट नो जस्ट वॉच माई प्रीवियस टूटोरियल नाउ कोडिंग मशीन लर्निंग बिकम्स वेरी सिंपल बिकॉज यू हैव प्री डिफाइंड एलगोरिदम्स इन साइड इट प्री डिफाइंड फंक्शन इन साइड इट ऑल यू हैव टू डू इज जस्ट कॉल दोज फंक्शन ऑल राइट सो इन दिस टूटोरियल वी बी डीलिंग विद अ कॉमन मशीन लर्निंग प्रॉब्लम विच इज द आई एस क्लासिफिकेशन प्रॉब्लम सो इन दिस प्रॉब्लम बेसिकली यू हैव फोर पैरामीटर्स ऑफ अ फ्लावर एंड बेस्ड ऑन दिस पैरामीटर्स इट हैज यू हैव टू क्लासीफाई इन टू वट स्पीशीज इट बिलोंग्स टू और राइट सो विल हैव अ डेटा सेट इन दैट डेटा सेट यूल हैव मैनी एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ फ्लावर्स ऑल राइट एंड यू हैव टू लर्न फ्रॉम दैट डेटा एंड प्रोडक्ट ऑन अनसीन डेटा सो क्वेश्चन इज वॉट टाइप ऑफ एलग्रिदम शुड बी यूज First of all, since we know the input and output beforehand, it's clear we'll be using a supervised learning. Now, under supervised learning, also there are many algorithms, and in this tutorial, we'll be solving that problem using linear regression. So now you need to understand what linear regression is. So machine learning problems can be classified into two categories: one is regression, other is classification. So classification is used when you want to classify something into some classes. For example, you are predicting if a particular fruit is an apple or not. So there are two classes: either it's an apple or either it's not. Or there can be multiple classes as well. Whether it's an apple, whether it's a pineapple, whether it's a strawberry. You get the point, right? So basically, you are classifying something. In regression, you predict the continuous value. For example, based on the number of rooms in a house, if you want to predict the housing price. So price is a regression problem, right? because it's a continuous value it's a numerical value there are no classes in that so in this we are using regression now you may wonder that if we are classifying it to different species why are we using regression so the thing is there are three types of species in this problem we are dealing with all right setosa i forgot the names but we are denoting the three species with 0 1 and 2 all right so if we Using regression, we'll get a value like zero point one, zero point two, zero point three. So we'll approximate that value to the closest class it falls into. For example, if you get a value of one point one two, we predict that it falls into category number one, which is a particular species. Or if it's one point nine eight, we'll predict that it falls into category number two, which is another species. All right. So that's why we're using regression. Now to understand why we're using linear regression, because the output data. is varying linearly with the input data all right so you won't understand how that's happening now once we plot the data on a graph then you'll understand this all right so the problem is linear regression is used whenever you want to predict a continuous value and when the data is varying linearly all right so now that we know what we problem what algorithm we are using let's just start with the code all right so before we get started with the code you need to have python installed and three libraries called cborn sklearn matplotlib and matplotlib all right so i'll show you how to install that as well so this is the code and you have to import certain libraries before you get started and i'll show you how so you have to go to your command prompt and run it as an administrator once you do that you have an option of importing packages from python using the pip command So it's a package Python installer which helps you install the Python libraries by using command pip install and write the name of whichever library you want to install. So in this case, we'll be uh, installing the Cborn library and it says that the requirements already satisfied because I have that library. So you have to import Cborn library, sklearn library, and the matplotlib that I've used in the code. Install these libraries and then we'll proceed with the code. So first we import Cborn library. Now Cborn is a library which we are going to use for data visualization, for plotting graphs and just analyzing the data. All right. The next library that we import is the sklearn library. All right. sklearn library is the main library which contains all the learning algorithms, all the learning models, and on top of that, it also contains the data sets on which we are going to work. All right. So in this case, the iris classification data set is already present in sklearn library. So from the SQL library we import the data sets. After that we import a library called matplotlib. All right. 
Now even matplotlib is used for data visualization. So the difference between matplotlib and seaborn is just that seaborn is a more advanced library which is built upon matplotlib. All right. So we'll be using both the libraries. Now under matplotlib, matplotlib there's a library called pyplot. Which contains a range of functions for creating and editing the graphs that you get. All right, so we'll be importing that library and name it as plt. After that, we want to import a function called train test split from the library sklearn dot model selection. I'll explain this later when we get to this function in the code. All right, so after importing this library, we move on to Actually, importing the data set into our Python environment. All right, so we do this by using a function called load underscore and whichever data set you want to import. In this case, it's called iris. So we write the line data sets dot load iris and store that under the variable iris. So if you want to see how your data looks like, you can write this line print iris. All right, so just print this line and uh, run the Python code. So you'll get something like this, all right. So this might not make sense to you because it's in a clustered form, right? So we have the input data. All this is the input data which contains arrays. Each array has four numbers inside it, which represents the four parameters of a flower. And then we have, if you scroll down, we have the output, which is the target. So zero stands for one species. The number one stands for another species, and two stands for another species. All right. To make this more clear, I'll show you this in an Excel format. All right. So this is how the actual data is. So we have four parameters for each flower: the sepal length, the sepal width, the petal length, and the petal width. Based on that, we predict which species it belongs to. So set to size one species. We're denoting it by number zero. Another species is versicolor, and the third species is virginica, which is denoted by the number two. All right. So if you see the data data set, it's in a very cluster format, and there are a lot of other parameters as well. If you see closely, you have the minimum value, maximum value, standard deviation of each parameter, right? And right now we don't need that. So what we'll do is let me just move the print iris line. We don't want to. Printed every time we run the code, so we take only the data, which is the parameters of the flowers, and store it in a variable called x, and the target, which is the output, final output, which species is the flower belonging to, and store that under y. So after we done that, we have the input, we have the output. Now we have to train the model. Before training, you need to understand your data, right? You need to visualize it so you know which algorithm would be best for my data. So we we'll do that using the Seaborn library and a function called boxplot, which basically plots in a box manner whatever data you give it. All right. So we use a function sns dot plot boxplot, and the parameters are whatever data you want to plot. So I'll plot the iris target and the sepal length. All right. So I want to see how my output is varying with respect to each parameter. So how is my species varying with respect to the petal length, and how are they varying with respect to my petal width? Things like this. So iris dot target is the final output, and iris dot data. This is basically index slicing. Since I only want, uh, since you see, if you see in this Excel file, I only want to measure the output with respect to one parameter at a time. So I I want only the sepal length. Say I want the species versus sepal length graph. So I'll only take the first column of all the rows. So in the code you can see this is what I've done. Iris dot data in brackets. This semicolon basically means I want all the rows, and zero basically means the first column. So the first column of all the rows will be plotted against the species, right? So once a block is plotted to actually display it on your screen, we have to use the function plt dot show. So after writing that line, just run the code. So you'll get a plot like this. All right. So as you can see, as the sepal length is increasing, 
my species is changing from 0 to 1 to 2 right so you can see this can be solved using a linear regression because these can be plotted on a line right and can be predicted accurately using that so the now before giving the entire data set to the model to train on i want to first split the data set into two parts the train section and the test section the reason i do that is because of a phenomena called overfitting all right that's a scenario where your model gets too familiar with a particular set of data and fails to recognize on unseen data all right to make this more clear let me give you an example in layman terms say you went to a hospital once and you had an encounter with a very bad doctor he gave you the bad diagnosis the bad medicines and you met two three doctors like these so that leads you to believe in that all doctors are bad right because you over generalize them because you've seen examples of only one category so if i model this train on a one particular data set over and over again it might make correct predictions on that data set but when you give it unseen data it might fail all right so that's why what we do is split the data set one is the train section on which the model is trained after it gets trained then we check if the model is trained correctly or not on the test part. So the test data set will act like unseen data for the model. So if my model does well on both the data sets, on both the sections, then that means my model has been trained well. So we split the data using this function called train underscore test underscore split and it will split into four sections, the, the training input, the test input, the training output and the test output all right and after that i just have to call the linear regression model from the sklearn library so i do that using this line after that i just have to store this model under the variable say linear underscore regression and i call the function of linear regression after that i simply have to supply my data to that model and it will automatically find a line that best fits the data right so all you have to do is call the function uh, linear regression dot fit and give the data set so since i'm only training it on the training set the parameters are x underscore train and y underscore train so now that the model has been fit to the data my machine learning model is ready to go if you want to see how accurate the data is we use the function linear regression dot score and in the brackets we give the parameters test input test and output test to check if the model performs well on the test set as well so just uh, write the add the line print to this so that you can actually see it on the display and then run the file so you can see the accuracy is 0.94 which is basically 94% so the model is pretty accurate right so now the machine learning problem is done if you want to predict to new values say you have a species that somebody has sent to you and you want to classify all you do is you simply use the function linear regression dot predict and whatever data set you want to predict it to so since I, I just predict on the test set only and print this all right so i'll remove this line because i don't want to plot the box every time yeah so my output is this so exactly so whenever so since this was a regression problem i've got a set of continuous values so whenever i get a value like 0 0.01 i'll approximate that as zero which is the setosa category of flowers if i get as 1.2 i'll approximate that as one so that was it for this tutorial so i'll be bringing more coding tutorials on different different algorithms so hope you like this video if you did like it do like share and subscribe and if there's any other topic you want me to cover, leave that in the comments. And yeah, thank you for watching.